Hello, and welcome to today's lesson 1.1, entitled The Real Number System. Today's objective will be to classify real numbers as one or more subsets. Specifically, we'll be identifying the natural numbers, the whole numbers, integers, rational, or irrational numbers. I'll give you a moment to read over the comic book, or the comic strip from Calvin and Hobbes to help get us started. To begin with, all numbers are classified as real numbers. It's the set combining both the rational and irrational. The real numbers are our largest set of numbers. Any number is considered a real number. Those two sets, the rational and irrational, rational numbers being a number that can be expressed as a fraction or a terminating or repeating decimal, and irrational numbers, a number that cannot be expressed as a fraction or as a non-terminating decimal. I really think of irrational numbers as being our, those kind of ugly numbers, those numbers that never end, never repeat, uh, the most famous being pi. The rational numbers can then be broken down into multiple subsets. First, starting with the next largest set, which is the integers. This is the set of numbers consisting of whole numbers and their opposites. So all those positive numbers and negative numbers. The rational numbers are all the numbers in between, those fractions. Then the whole numbers can be pulled out of the integers. I'm basically just then getting rid of all of the negative numbers. Starting with 0, it's 1, 2, 3, and so on. Little dot, dot, dot means etc. And the smallest set of numbers is our natural numbers. This is sometimes referred to as the counting numbers. It's the set of whole numbers, but starting with 1. Those numbers that you learned first in kindergarten that you can count on your fingers and toes. 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. All the way to infinity. So I say it's the smallest set of numbers, but it is really a very large set of numbers. Another way to look at the sets of numbers is in this type of diagram. Starting with the natural numbers being the smallest, we add natural numbers being examples 1, 2, 3, etc. Whole numbers are those same exact numbers, that's why they're in this circle, but we add the number 0. So the whole numbers is just a little bit bigger, in fact it's only one number larger. The integers, now I add all those negatives, so negative 1, negative 13, uh, all the way to negative infinity. And then the rational numbers are even bigger because now I'm adding all those fractions. So I have like my 1 half, my 0 0.333 3 repeating, how that never ends. Uh, also 0.145145 might be in there. I put the dot, dot, dot because that number is just going to continue repeating like that forever and ever. Uh, irrational numbers are separate from all of those because like I said those are the ugly numbers so like a most famous one would be pi um, those numbers we really don't know much about so like the square root of 13 I don't know that number uh, but I do know the square root of 16 would be 4 so that would be fall over here in the rational numbers uh, another irrational number might be the square root of 101 something I know would be close to 10, but I don't know the exact amount. The real numbers are then all of these numbers, so any number can be classified as a real number. That's why it's the biggest set encompassing all of those numbers. Let's take a look here and do some problems. So irrational numbers are the set of numbers that cannot be expressed as a fraction or a terminating or repeating decimal. We want to circle the numbers that are irrational, so those ugly numbers, those numbers I don't know much about. Uh, they're neither terminating, which means they end, just like the terminator. He, end, he was out to end John Connor's life. So let's take a look here at some numbers. The opposite of the square root of 6 
Do I know the so I need to ask myself, do I know the square root of 6? I don't know the square root of 6. I know the square root of 4 and 9, but I do not know this, so I would circle that as being an irrational number. Uh, 51, fine, it ends, it terminates. Uh, it's just the number, so therefore it's considered rational. I will not circle it. Square root of 3, I'm definitely circling. Uh, some other samples, I already have told you that pi is most definitely an irrational number. The opposite of 10 over 2. 10 divided by 2 is 5, negative 5. It's a very nice number, something I know something about. Uh, 1 third, negative 18. These all look like nice numbers. 0, 42 over 6 reduces to 7. That's fine. Square root of 10, something I don't know much about. Square root of 2, square root of 5. The opposite square root of 36, well, square root of 36 is 6. The opposite of that would be negative 6, therefore it is fine. And this problem right here might be a question mark, but it terminates, it ends here at the 8, therefore it is rational. Now when I'm looking for rational numbers, these are, can be written as a fraction or as a terminating or repeating decimal. So I'm basically looking for those numbers that end or are nice fractions or nice numbers, something that I know something about. I know that. 21, 1, uh, 0.333 dot 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 means it continues on, so it's repeating. That 3 is repeating, the 1 half negative five-thirds, negative one, and so on. You can see here that there are many numbers that are rational numbers. And I can just continue to find those here. And I hope you're finding the same ones. Square root of 121 simplifies to 11. 5 is good. 7 over 2 becomes 3.5, so that's good. And negative 2 is my last one. All right. Integers, the set of numbers consisting of whole numbers and their opposites. So let's circle those numbers that are the integers. Just that can be mostly closely defined to as the integers. So I'm looking for integers. 42 over 6 becomes 7. That's an integer. 7 over 2, 3.5, not an integer. 21, integer. So I'm basically just looking for those counting numbers on my number line and their opposites. So both 18 and negative 18 would be considered integers. 5. The opposite of the square root of 36, well, the square root of 36, this becomes negative 6, so that is definitely an integer. One third, no. Negative 10 over 2 simplifies to negative 5, so I like that. And 0 is an integer, it's the number that's in the middle of our integer, so of course we want that one. Oh, looks like I missed one up here. I have the uh, square root of 121 would be 11. Now I'm looking for the whole numbers. The whole numbers start at 0 and they go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if it's those types of numbers I'm looking for, they're only positive and including 0. So any negatives would be a no. 21, 0, no, 5, yes, negative 5, no, 11. So you see there's many ways to write these numbers that look like whole numbers. And I believe that's it for my whole numbers. So there's lots of ways to write it as a fraction, a square root symbol, 
but I'm just looking for those positive numbers including zero. Now let's circle those numbers that are natural numbers. So if I'm looking for the naturals, those are just my counting numbers. They start my fingers and toes, so one, two, three, and so on. So they're only positive. And I do not include zero this time, so I'm not including zero. You can see the amount of numbers I'm circling is becoming less and less with every set of numbers. But a number like nine is natural. It is a whole number. It is an integer. All of these numbers are, in fact. It is also rational. I can has multiple sets it belongs to, and it is also a real number. So the number nine is natural, whole, integer, rational, and real. It belongs in all five of those sets of numbers. All of these numbers would belong to the reals, and we can classify them from there on. So if I'm looking at this, and I want to sort these numbers, and help to define them a little bit better. I'm look, I might put any non-terminating decimal. 